the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, thank you for your wonderful presence in our life. Thank you for keeping us safe and sound. And thank you for your protection each and every moment, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to hear and be able to sit with you, Lord, listening to your word and pondering it, Lord. Lord, thank you for helping us to ponder it and practice it in our life. Thank you for your intervention in our life each and every moment. Lord, we thank you for our listen and his time and his effort and all his life's experiences, Lord. Lord, bless him. Thank you for blessing him and his family, Lord. Lord, bless each and every children participating in this Bible study, Lord. Lord, give them the grace to know you, Lord. That's what they need in their life, Lord. Only that is what is important in their life, Lord Jesus. Give the grace of knowing you, Lord, and experiencing you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Over to you, Alistair. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, praise God. So yesterday we were saying on the name of Jesus and we saw on how uh, the angel of the Lord came to Joseph and said, you shall name him Jesus and he is called Emmanuel and all that we saw yesterday. Praise God. Okay, let's go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. Is Enoch there? No. No, he's not there. Shall I put? No problem, I can put it. It's a Bible get. Verse number forty one, we read from verse number forty one. See that. Um, that uh, we read from verse number thirty seven. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet, and a coat of mail. David put it on, struck the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things. I can't go in these, he protested to Saul, I am not used to them. So David took them off again. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them in his shepherd into his shepherd's bag. Then armed only then armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Goliath walked out toward David with his shield bearer of, ahead of him. Sneering in contempt at his ruddy-faced boy. Am I a dog, he roared at David, that thou come, that you comes at me with a stick? And he cursed David by the names of his God. Come over here and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. David replied to the Philistine, you come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied today, the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head, and then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals. 
animals and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle. And he will give you to us. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him, reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone. He hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone. For he had no sword. Then David ran and ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from its sheet. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. See the next verse. Okay. Now, when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they turned and ran. Then the men of Israel and Judah gave a shout, a great shout of triumph. And ran, rushed, sorry, and rushed after the Philistines, chasing them as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron. The bodies of the dead and wounded Philistines were strewn all along the road from Sharaim as far as Gath and Ekron. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Then the Israelite army turned, returned, and plundered the deserted Philistine camp. David took the Philistines into Jerusalem, but he stored the man's armor in his own tent. Okay. As Saul watched David go out to fight the Philistine, he asked Abner, the commander of his army, Abner, whose son is this young man? I really don't know, Abner declared. Well, the fell well. Find out who he is, the king told him. As soon as David returned from killing Goliath, Abner brought him to Saul with the Philistine's head still in his hand. Tell me about your father, young man, Saul said. And David replied, his name is Jesse and we live in Bethlehem. Now you see this uh, whole thing, how it came out, okay. God knew this battle would become, this battle would be there. God knew it. And that's why he sends David out. If David would have said, because David in the previous verse was anointed as a king, if he would have said, come on, I am anointed as a king. Do you expect me to become a delivery boy? If he would have said that, what would have happened? Israelite would have been destroyed. They would have not got the victory. But because of David's obedience to the father's will was the reason why they got the victory over that, over, over Goliath. So God has a will for your life. And the reason why he has will for your life is because he, when you fulfill that plan and that purpose which he has commanded you to fulfill, that's when his plan can come in this planet Earth. Now God, out of his love for us, okay, he loved us, he died for us, he took our punishment, yes? Uh, one doubt, uh, not doubt, just uh, tell that God has a will for your life and when you fulfill, what, what did you say? I didn't get it. When you fulfill that will, okay, that's when you discover that plan which God has for you. Only when you fulfill it. Before you fulfill it, you will not discover it because God doesn't reveal the whole thing to you. God only reveals a step. Part of it. Okay. What, what did he say? His word is a lamp unto my feet. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. A lamp will not show you the whole direction and the whole plan and the whole will. It will only show you the next step. So until you fulfill that plan and go make first step, second step, third step, that's when you start to discover this is what God has for you. Okay. Got it. Thanks. Yes, no problem. Okay. Now, Let's scroll back up to verse number 43. Okay. Am I 
a dog he rode at David then you that you come to me with a stick and he cursed David by the names of his god see that g is not a capital g it is a lower case g that means it's speaking about the goliath's god and he's saying he cursed hey god. david he cursed david does anyone know why there is curse in our life many people think there is curse in my life because that person one time said and cursed me no the reason there is curse in a person's life is because that person himself has opened his mouth and has spoken something that is not in line with the word are you understanding so curse doesn't come see see curse doesn't come because of somebody else doing something to you curse comes because you did something to that somebody else did you get what i'm trying to say it doesn't come because that person did it to you but because you did it to that person and that's why i would say it's extremely important for us not to operate in curse and the only way for us to not operate in curse is when i understand the blessing that he has given to me praise god so are you following yes this so curse part, says, curse part i didn't understand uh, aliston when uh, we have done something to the other see, person that's what many people think uh you know curses what some that what that person said for example if there is a and b mm. and b says something really bad and curses a mm. it's not a is not cursed because b cursed a a mm. is cursed because b, a is cursed because a believed the curse but what if a would say i am not cursed because god has blessed me would the curse affect okay So even if somebody says something to you, is it because of what that person did to you, or because you accepted what that person did, responded okay. to them? Okay. See, many a times we react, mm. but we don't know how to act. What's the difference between reacting and acting? Reacting is based on a situation. as i was saying for example if somebody comes and says something mean to you soon you will take revenge that's called reacting but in god's kingdom it's not about reacting it's about acting it's about responding and what is acting acting is yeah you said that to me well i'm going to act i'm not going to generate my act from what you said but i'm going to generate my act from what god said i am doing this not to take revenge because of what you said but i'm doing this because i'm obeying what my god said mm god hallelujah your video is off aliston no i have it. come through two devices ah okay that's the thing. but still ah uh, okay now i we are yeah that's the reason why okay. you could not see me i just spotlighted him now because <laughs> okay Thank you, Jesus. So, are you understanding? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now you see that forty-fourth verse. Come over here, and I will give your flesh to the birds and wild animals. Goliath yell. You see here, David was having. an attitude of giant killing attitude but let's see another attitude when there is a giant for example let's go to the israelites i think it's numbers chapter 13 okay i'm not sure i think it's numbers chapter 13 numbers numbers chapter 13 was number 
Okay, we'll read for verse number 20, 23. Okay, 22. Okay, see that. Uh, I'll put um, KGV for this. Okay. And they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron, where Ahimin and uh, Hermin and Shishai and Talmai, the children of Anak, were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zon in Egypt. And they came unto the brook of Eskol and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes. And they bear it between two upon a staff. Now, you see today in our day to day, uh, we have technology for everything. For example, you enter into your room. What do you find? You find uh, maybe a phone or a tablet or an iPad or something, some device or speakers or Bluetooth earphones or just headphones or something or the other. What is in front of you right now? a laptop or a phone or some kind of device, right? If you enter into the sitting room, what do you get? All devices, you get LED lights on the roof. Yeah, it is like that. Then uh, most of the time, not all of the time. And then you get a TV sitting on the table over there. Okay, is that a device? Yes, it is. Okay, and if you go into the kitchen, then what do you get? More devices. Have you seen ovens and microwaves and things like that? Then if you enter into different parts of your house, you see there are different gadgets, technology, right? Hello, am I right? Yes, yes you are right. Yes. yes. If you enter in all of your room, most probably you will have a fan or an AC, correct? Technology. Now, many a times when we have to carry something or when we have to do something, technology does it for us. We have certain technologies that do it for us. Okay. Machines. Machinery. But at that time, yes. did they have machines at this, what we're reading right now? Oh. Thousands and thousands and millions of years ago, did they have technology? No. no. Now, they were very strong people that indicates correct yes now if they are taking a cluster of grapes and they are bearing it between two people what does that mean how big will be the cluster of grapes yeah it should be quite heavy very big quite heavy i guess it would be as big as a person mm. average person you get a cluster of grapes around that big correct yeah. Imagine you have a cluster of grapes as big as a person, average person. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I guess one, one grape would be as big or even as bigger than an apple or an orange, bigger than that. That heavy it would have been. It could, it could have fed a lot of people. Yeah, I like to see it as one grape would be bigger than a pineapple. Okay, now they're carrying it because it's so heavy and they are very strong built people and they're not carrying it upon one person, upon two, upon a staff. And they brought off the, uh, brought off the land, okay. Pomegranates, figs, and of the figs, okay. See that the place was called the brook of Eskol because the, of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from them. Let's read that third twenty third from A and B. Okay. Okay. See that. Then they came to the valley of Eskol. Cluster of grapes means it means cluster of grapes because of so many grapes over there. And from there, cut down a branch with a single cluster of grapes. And they carried it on a pole between two of them with some of pomegranates 
and of the figs. That place was called the Valley of as is called the cluster of grapes because of the cluster of grapes which the son of Israel cut down there. Now see that. We'll come back to KJV for that 25th verse. Okay. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. Okay, and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told them and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it flows with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong. Nevertheless, you know what nevertheless means? Does anyone know what it nevertheless Even word though? means? Even though? Even though, okay. Simple word. I want a very simple word, not tricky word. Nevertheless actually is forever. But nevertheless... Whatever. However. What, whatever, okay. Nevertheless, in other words, I like to say is very simply called but. Okay. But the people be strong. See, 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 let's read it like that. And they told them and said, We came unto the land with the love centers, and surely it flows with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. But the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled, and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea, and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have got to search it is a land that eat it upon the inhabitants, therefore, and all the people that they saw in it are men of great stature. Now there, the Bible says, brought up an evil report. So the evil report was that there are giants in the land, right? Raise your hands if you believe me. The evil report was that there are giants in the land. No? Yes? Make up your mind. No? Yes? What? No? Why no? The report was correct. They brought the correct picture. Okay, then why it says evil report? What is the evil report? Because they believed that they are powerful than the Lord. Okay, they were scared. I'm looking for a simple answer. Give me a simple answer. Even yours is tricky answer. Nice, nice. Very simple. It's extremely simple. Because they had, they were, they had fear. They had fear. Okay. No, they said but. But yeah. they said but yeah said but, but okay even but but even in the kingdom of God but comes the <laughs> but, doctor said this but, but by the wounds of Jesus are healed mm. no but they use yeah, but they told the good news first and then they told but so then after they are actually meaning the bad news they are okay that's not in the bad news. <laughs> the evil report was not that they said that. Um, you know, uh, there are giants in the land. You know what was the evil report? Very simple. We are not able to go against them. You know what they spoke? The evil report is not fear or uh, it's they're not believing the Lord is with them. Evil report is very simply they are speaking something that is contradicting to the word of God. Very simple. They spoke something that is not in line with the word. Evil report is not speaking what you see. 
There is nothing wrong in speaking what you see. What if I say, yes, I can see the symptom by, by the wounds of Jesus and you. Is that wrong to speak what I see? No. It is not wrong to speak what you see, but it is absolutely wrong to speak something that is not in line and that is not matching up with the word of God. Because God said to them, you are able to go up against the, 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 these giants and these uh, children of Anak, but they said, no, we are not able to go. And that's the biggest mistake they made. That's the mistake many a times we make. Am I right? Yeah, many a times. So did you understand? So what is the evil report in our lives today? Speaking something contradicting to the word. The doctor said that my mother has the sickness or my father has the sickness or the doctor said I have the sickness. That's of no issue. But the doctor said I have the sickness. So I will suffer this and I will die and I will never be healed. That's a lie. Because Jesus said, by his wounds you are healed. And you very clearly said, I'm not healed. So are you understanding? Yes? Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So you see the attitude of the of the um, of the Israelites, okay. There were 10 of them that said, we are not able to go up against the land of, uh, the, 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 the land of this land. And there were two of them that said, okay, that we are able to go up. Now, many a times, are we agreeing with majority or majority. minority? Majority. Majority. When I go and see a YouTube yeah, or a video, so for example, I have I have seen this happening many times. If my mother would go, and, and it happens with many people, uh, before we came into the word of God, or even after coming into the word of God, if uh, we go, okay, for example, if the special times when your mother or father, of, of many times mother, then they go, when they're cooking, and they go onto YouTube, and they're seeing what to cook today, recipe, they're trying to find a recipe, and they see a recipe. What will they do? The first thing you'll do is go in the comments and see how many people have put, uh, whether it's a good recipe, whether it's a bad recipe. Am I right? Yeah. Do you agree with minority or majority? Oh, majority of them said it's not that good, so maybe I'm not going to cook that. A minority mm. of, of them said that it, it, that it is good. But what if majority of it said, wow, it's amazing, and minority said it's not good. What will happen? Now mother will cook it. Correct? Uh, yeah. Many events. And, and it's not only with cooking, okay? It's with everything. We go with majority, majority than minority. If in your school, okay, if the teacher told to do something, okay, and most of the children don't do it, you will say, why should I do it? I'll also not do it. What do you, who did you agree with? Majority or minority? Majority. Majority. And most of the time, the majority of the people don't disagree with God's word. And that's why we have, we have to be extremely careful not to agree to the word, not to the things that are contradicting to the word of God. So are you understanding? Yes. Okay, right down. Yes. Whenever I'm facing, whenever I'm facing, Situations, situations, situations. That look like, 
like look like that look like goliath goliath i should never agree or we should never agree i should never agree with the evil report with the evil report or of of the majority of people or of the majority of people who agree on something who agree on something rather what god said could you repeat could you repeat he will from the evil report what god said Rather, what God said. Could you repeat from the start? Should be bigger. Rather, what God said should be bigger. In our lives. In our lives. Please, God. So are you understanding? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, write down one one more point. Write down. In God's kingdom. In God's kingdom. in god's kingdom in god's kingdom we have to look at any situation we have to look at any situation in a giant killer mentality in a giant killer mentality and not in a giant afraid mentality and not in a giant afraid mentality when they receive the bad the, when they receive the evil report from the uh, ten spies what happened to them what happened to the israelites fear fear gripped them fear came into them and it's it's very important in our lives not to allow fear to come in because the moment fear comes the devil is taken control because that's what the devil is looking for your control and that's why you have to be extremely vigilant not to give him this control the devil tries to make you a fool when he himself realizes that he is a fool right many times he tries to attack us and tries to deceive us when he himself is fallen into a very big deception many times he comes with a trap to try to trap us but he himself is in a very big trap when i operate in faith and not in fear praise god so did you understand thank you jesus okay now in our lives today okay you see faith is always based on the knowledge of god's word if david being in the old covenant was so confident of the covenant which he had with god how about our confidence are we when the situation comes are we crying when it and when the situation comes the first thing we do is cry about it thinking that crying can bring something crying is not wrong i can cry under the anointing as well but i should never allow 
How hard I say? I should never allow the devil to rule it, to rule the crime. I should never do it in a emotion, in a negative emotional way. That's why emotions are not wrong. Emotions are not wrong. God has designed us to have an emotion. The spirit of God inside us has emotions. You see, when Jesus was at the tomb of Lazarus, what did he do? He cried. He also had emotions. But his emotions was not ungodly. His emotions were godly, which led him to a, uh, to a place where his faith was strong. His relationship was strong with God. And the same faith that is given to us also, we should use to make, to, to make sure that our relationship is strong with the Lord, that our relationship is strong with his word. Praise God. So did you understand? Are there any questions on this? Hallelujah. Any doubts? Praise God. Okay. So with you and my Sinanti, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Alistair. I always uh, loved this topic, you know, the, the giant killer attitude, you know, the fear, uh, you know, ruling us. And uh, that's uh, absolutely, uh, you know, a truth. The moment fear comes, you know, the, the natural human being disappears. So thank you for taking us, taking this topic. Uh, this is wonderful. And, uh, and, and one more thing, what you said is the faith is based on the knowledge. That's actually the topic which I was taking. Faith is based on knowledge of God's word. Uh, yeah, we finished is, on the name of Jesus. Right. So it is, it is so, you know, if we don't have the knowledge, the fear, automatically comes in. So, wonderful, Alistair. Thank you so much. Uh, let's uh, wind up uh, with the prayer. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that you have given us, oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time that we, are about, we have spent with your word, oh, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for your mercy, Lord, for revealing to us the secrets and the mysteries. And Lord, the mystery is, Lord, that you who has been hidden for generations and ages now is living on the inside of us. Help us, Lord, to be righteous to you, to be in right standing with you and with your kingdom, O oh Lord Jesus. For us to live lives that lead you to, for us to live lives that lead away from darkness and into the glorious light of Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time that we have spent with your word. And Lord, as we have spent this time with your word, it is your anointing filling us with your power in us and with your spirit in us. And Lord, whatever we are going to do, Lord, after this day, Lord, is blessed, is anointed, it is successful. And whatever we do by the work of our hands, it is blessed. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, our Father. Amen. 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 Thank you all. Thank you. See thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bless bye. you all. Happy Sunday. And see you all tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.